สวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับครับสกาวสำหรับที่ได้ฟังมิกลี่ so that's it really uh, uh, saying hello in Thai uh, again I'd like to introduce myself really shortly my, my name is uh, uh, Bacha or you can call me Joe that's uh, probably you know easier okay uh, my testimony uh, before I I you know I start this uh, uh, my testimony I'd like to give you a little bit of my background that uh, currently I am Uh, you know, I'm a student at uh, you know Wycliffe College. I, me and my wife have just come to Canada just less than a year, so we are really new to Canada. Not only just uh, you know for the college, so we came back to school, as you can see. <laughs> okay, my my testimony has a lot to do with one single question, which is, who do I give my life to? Okay, the question is, who do I give my life to? Okay, I was born in a Buddhist family, you know, just like you know many other Thais that you know you might know. Uh, my parents are business people. However, my aunt, my aunt is is a medium to a spirit, an unknown spirit. Okay, and and the whole time my parents have relied on blessing from this spirit in their business, and they became quite successful. Uh, in fact. And then I remember that one day, one day, uh, my my parents told me that, you know, me as the first child, just as the first son of the family, you know, we need to dedicate you to this, to dedicate my soul, you know, to this spirit in order for the family to receive the blessing, basically for the business. And I did as a six-year-old boy, without knowing anything. However, later on. As I grew up, I knew that the one that I actually gave my soul to or my life to is actually myself, right? And and as soon as you, and as soon as I realized that I, I myself am the ultimate being of myself, then I subdue to the worldly desire, which means you know all the desire that I have. Is for the joy of my life, which you know I will provide for myself, you know prosperity and all kinds of stuff that that the world would give. That's what I used to live for, for for such a long time. And then, and then wealth and fame definitely become the idols, right? Until 1998, 1998, it was a time when economic crisis hit Southeast Asia really harshly. Now, if you remember, uh, a lot of businesses went bankrupt, and my family business was no exception. But by the time at that in that year, I was studying in the states, so I I had to rely, uh, you know, totally financial support from my family. So which means there was no more. So as, as I was struggling to live, you know, uh, day by day while studying at the same time, you know. Many other questions also came up, not just only one single question I mentioned. The question is like, is that all life there is for me? One day I lived as a king, and then the next day I had a hard time even put food on my plate. And I really, I realized that I really cannot control my life at all. How will it be for the life after death? Is there a life after death? And I was always taught that doing good in this life will contribute to your next life well-being, or hopefully will get you to heaven. And then, how about the bad things that I have done? How would that compensate? But by the way, who set these rules? So those are the questions that certainly came up quite a lot while I was struggling. Uh, you know, economically, and they were left unanswered. And one day, as I walked on campus, I came across with a Christian, who later on I engaged in conversation, and this is what he explained to me. He said, "We were all born with sins, and we commit sin. The only consequence of the sin is death in eternity. 
okay, according to the standard of the Creator, God. However, He created us and loves us so much that He came to the world as Jesus and died on a cross to pay the death penalty for our sin. This is called God's grace or the free gift for us. Jesus said that whoever believes in Him would not perish but have eternal life. It is the re-establishment of the relationship between us, the Creator, with the Creator God. So that's, that's a really main idea that I have never heard. Can you imagine? I was around 24 by the time I had never heard all of this at all in my home country. And I had to hear that in the States. And later on that night, after pondering for, about what uh, my friend told me, together with a lot of questions that I, it just came up, I decided to pray to accept Jesus into my life and ask for his help. At that time, my prayer was answered. And by God's blessing, I received a scholarship and I could graduate. Although it might sound like I desperately came to Him only because of something I want from Him. That might sound like to you and also to me as well. However, I have, I have seen the scripture, many scriptures come true in my life, in my walk with Jesus 24 years. One of the verses I'd like to share with you is that from Matthew 6.33, but seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. That was so true. And my love and my desire to, to know Him grew more than the, the desire of His gift. And it is only because of the fact that He loves me first. And He loves me not because of what I have done, but it's because of who He is. And I came to understand that I no longer follow a religion, but my relationship, my broken relationship with the Creator has been fixed through the blood of Jesus Christ. And, I, and it's just only because of that time I took that step of faith to decide to accept Him to my life, to choose, choose to believe. Many times I imagine myself, like if you're going somewhere, like this morning coming on the TTC, thinking about that, that one step, that you step forward from the platform where you stay onto the train would change everything. Imagine if I never step that, if I never took that step, in the morning. Until now, I was still standing there at the platform. I would never be here. That same one step of faith that we have to take in order, in order to get to the, the place where our Creator has determined for us. And so now, my answer to the first question, if you remember, the first question was, who do I give my life to? The answer to that question, and also to you, you, you can also ask yourself, the answer to that question does not only give me peace, and it will give you peace, but it determines your destiny. It determines where you're going to be in eternity. So, who do you give your life to? Thank you very much, praise God. Well, hello. Shalom to everybody. Shalom. There you go. Shalom. Well, um, I come from a Muslim background family. So I'm very used to saying, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Anybody knows that greetings? Yes. Oh my God. A lot of people. Well, when Jesus uh, rose from the dead, and he appeared to his disciples in that upper meeting room. And uh, the first thing he said, Shalom to you. He said, Shalom. He didn't say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. He said, Shalom. 
Why did he say shalom? Can, uh, I wonder why did he say only shalom? Because he was God. And he is giving that shalom. The peace I give you, the world doesn't give like that. Anyway, you guys look wonderful, beautiful, because he made you, created you wonderfully and beautifully, right? Isn't that great? Well, I didn't know that God loves me until 1990. Before 1990, I was not sure if he even likes me. I knew that he is a creator. He is waiting there to punish me for every deed that I have done. I was lost. I kept sinning. I had no hope until I met a friend. He is a Christian. He is a missionary friend back home in Bangladesh. And God chose me. Um, I was a very radical one, a radical Christian, fundamental Christian. Whatever my parents taught me, that's what I was following. That's what I was doing. I used to go to mosque, say five times, seven times prayer, fast, but never had a connection with God, the God of heaven and earth, the Creator who loves all of us unconditionally. I didn't know Him. So one day I met this gentleman in the train and uh, he asked me to go to his house. So I actually went to his house. His house is quite far distance. And then uh, we met several um, visits. And uh, in one of the visits he told me, Mamoon, we cannot be friends anymore. I said, why? And he showed me a national newspaper on the front page Bug doesn't like me. Um, um, he showed me a national newspaper on the front page. He, it says, Muslims should not have friends with Christians. It says in the Quran, it's not I'm like that. I'm not just making it up. It says in the Quran, Surah number 5, if you read Surah number 5, verse 82, and verse 51, they're in, uh, they actually contradict with each other. In one verse says, they cannot be friends with Christians. The other one says, you cannot have any better person to be friends with other than Christians. All right, well, anyway, so I, I said, uh, maybe God is giving me a chance to make this guy a Muslim because he raised this topic and I should tell him why he is Christian. And I said, you know what? God loves all of us. It's just because of your faith. You call Jesus Christ the Son of God. He is God. That was with a dust on my face. That cannot be true. And uh, he looked at me. He said, Mahmoud, I want you to write down the date and time that you have started talking to me about religion. It's not me. Because in Bangladesh there is a saying, the missionaries come to our country and they make Muslims Christians. And uh, I said, well, what do you have to say? He said, let's go to my office. So I went to his office. And it's a simple office. He gave me a Quran to me. And I looked at the Quran, I looked at him, I said, you're a Christian, how come you have a Quran? And he said, why, Quran is not for anybody else except Muslims. And I was, see, he is putting my world upside down. He is trying to make me out of my, uh, the, the fence. And I realized that yes, Quran is for everybody, anybody and everybody can read it. It has information. And uh, he said, let's, talk, let's read Quran. I said, you know how to read Quran in Arabic? He said, no, I can read it in English and you can read it in Bangla, right? I said, yeah. So he had a Bengali Quran, English Quran, and I went through all nine years about Jesus. His wonderful birth is written in the Quran. Um, his mother, uh, how the Holy Spirit came and uh, gave birth uh, with His Holy Spirit. His mother was not married. It's all written there. So my eyes was open. I said, oh my God, what am I seeing? My Quran is saying that Jesus Christ was born of the Holy Spirit. So my, my, my friend asked me, so if God 
um, made a lady who is who has never been married. He, if he made him her pregnant with his Holy Spirit, who can be the father of this son? And I said, well, should be God, right? He said, my friend, you said it. Yeah. A lot of Muslim people, they have this uh, wrong idea in their mind that God has to come physically to give birth to Jesus. But our God is Almighty. He just said, let there be light. And there was light. And He said, let Jesus be born out of this virgin. And Jesus was conceived by His mother and He was born. So, no Christians ever say, Jesus Christ is the physical Son of God. We say the spiritual Son of God and God is His spiritual Father. So when I came to know, and uh, I cannot say no, I don't believe now, because it's all clear. So I went back to my <laughs> place, I said, you know what, I have had enough information, I have to go back. So I met my, the, the religious teacher at the mosque, and my religious teacher said, I told you, do not meet any Christians. If you meet them, they will make you Christian. <laughs> did I tell you that? I said, you did. I said, don't go there anymore. So I listened to him for about a month. But every day of that month, it, it felt like somebody in my ear is saying, Mamun, you should go visit this man. Mamun, you should go visit this man. Now I know who that one was. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. So about a month later, I met this gentleman again. And uh, we talked, we talked, and uh, I got all my answers. So one day, he said, Ramun, I want to give you a challenge. I said, haven't you given me enough challenge already? He said, what is the challenge? I said, what is the challenge? And he said, find a quiet place in your house where there is no one. Close the door and put a chair in front of you thinking that God Almighty is coming and sitting in that chair and ask Him, challenge Him that God, if you are real, if you are alive, talk to me. If you want me, there's so many religions in this world, if you want me to worship you in the name of Prophet Muhammad or all these Hindu idols or the Buddhist uh, idol or in, or in Jesus' name, you have to let me know today. There, there can't be so many medias. God sent different prophets in different times. God sent Moses, God sent David, God sent all, Jeremiah, Isaiah, different times. But to, 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 to give them a message, right? But God sent only one Messiah, one Savior. And His name says it all, right? Jesus Christ, the Anointed One. Amen? Amen. So I, I said, what is that challenge? He said, when you find a place, he said, God, I want to know you. Here I am. Kneel before that chair. Cry and say, you have to talk to me today. If you do not talk to me, I'm not going to believe you anymore. Period. I'm not going to believe you. But when you ask God to talk to you at the end, you ask Him to talk to you in the name of Jesus. I said, okay. So one day, uh, we had Muslim festival since I was born and raised in a Muslim home. Sorry, I'm taking a little bit long. You're not bored, right? <laughs> okay. Um, so I was home alone and uh, I was watching TV because on an Eid festival there are a lot of programs if you're in, from that part of the area. Um, we, I was watching TV. So at midnight there's no one at home, everybody's out. So again I hear this voice. What are you doing? Turn the TV off. Right. Okay. I was very serious. I turned the TV off and as a Muslim, before you pray, you need to wash yourself. I did that and I put a chair in front of me and I knelt before that chair. And I said, God, please forgive me because I'm daring to challenge you today. And I have to do it. Because all these years, all these years I have been worshipping you. I'm going door to door asking people to come to the mosque and pray. But you have never told me that Mahmoud, you are doing the right thing. 
But today, I need to be sure that you know what I'm doing and it's right. So I said, all these Hindu peoples, they worship idols. They worship it through worshiping their idols. If you want me to worship you by worshiping these idols, I'll bring them home. But please tell me. So I was on a concrete floor on my knees, on my hand is like this, my eyes were closed. I was waiting five, seven minutes. No response. I didn't even feel like praying. Then I switched to Buddha. And I said, God, his idol looks so beautiful, so cute, so good. It's golden. That must be the right one. Please, God, tell me, if you want me to worship you by worshiping Buddha, I'll bring a golden idol at my house. I'll worship you. Again, I'm waiting. Five, seven, ten minutes. No response, no feeling, nothing. And then, thirdly, I started praying in my own prophet's name that I had been worshipping him through Muhammad. And I said, God, I know, I know Muhammad is true. All these years I have been worshipping you in the name of Muhammad. God, please tell me, make me sure he is the right one. He is the, he is the right prophet who can help me. Who can take me to heaven? I'm waiting on the concrete floor. My knees are getting tired because it's concrete floor, right? And my hands are like this. And God kept me waiting. This time I waited 10, 15, 20 minutes. I was almost believing that there is no God. Because I'm not getting any response. Because I was hoping, I told God, I was hoping that you were let the high wind blow, let the thunder roar, or I want to hear a voice, something. Nothing. And then at the end, I was annoyed. So almost ready to say, there's no God. That's it. No more worshiping Him. And I said, what about Jesus? In a, in a, you know, I, I was agitated, right? And that voice, what about Jesus? And I tell you, my friends, please pay attention. My, my room door is closed. My hands are like this. I'm kneeling. I said, what about Jesus? And I felt like somebody stepped into my room. I hear his footstep. He's coming right behind me. And I felt like all my pain, all my sorrows are going away from my body, through my head to the roof. And I'm just floating on the, on the cloud. That's the feeling I'm having. And it's not there. And I hear this audible voice, Mamu, I am Jesus. I love you. I need you to follow me. My friend, our Lord is alive. Yes. Our Lord, Jesus is alive. In Matthew 28, verse 20, he said, Behold, I am with you always. He is right here. We need to give him all the praise. I'm, I thank uh, the worship team. I cannot thank you enough the way you are giving him all the glory and honor. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. My friend, we are so happy, so blessed. Why did a wretch like me? He saved me. Why? There's a reason. I'm not here only to tell you my testimony, but there is a, I sometimes wonder, why did you save me? Just so that I can go to heaven? Let's run to heaven. No. No, my friend. Don't take your salvation for granted. Please, please don't. Your name is written in that book. But you have to go through the fire still. Bear in mind, Jesus, when he was going to heaven, he didn't ask you to give his money and your money your gold, your riches, your wealth. All he said, go to all the nations. Make them disciples. Teach them what I taught you. Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Behold, I'm with you always. If you ask yourself, if you are not doing it, you are going to have to give an account to God, to Jesus.
Remember, Jesus didn't request it. Jesus didn't ask you gently, can you please? But Jesus commanded you. If you do not follow the command of the King of the Kings, the Lord of Lords, you and I are going to be trouble. I thank God that I'm here. I was able to encourage you and God is always there with you, my friends. There are a lot of Muslims in this city, they are coming by thousands. There are a lot of mosques. When I came to Canada, in my area in Scarborough, there were, I can, I can count four or five mosques, but there are now about 50, 60 mosques. They are full. On Friday, go to their mosque. It's full. Who is going to preach to them? Who is going to tell them that you don't have a hope right now, but come to Jesus. He will give you hope and assurance. That you can go to heaven. Amen. 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 God bless you, my friend.